Hey everyone, thank you for coming and clicking on this video. We're gonna be showing you today how to replace your pull timer. If your pull timer has ever went out and it's not functioning, it's not keeping the time, and you need to replace it because your pump is either not turning on when it's supposed to, or it's uh, running uh, 24 hours a day. So today we're gonna be showing you how to replace a 230 volt pull timer. Stay tuned. All right, these are just a few of the tools, most common ones you're gonna be needing to do to replace your, your timer mechanism. If you have a Intermatic timer box like we have right here, a uh, simple pair of needle nose pliers, a Phillips screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, a 5 16 nut wrench, and a quarter inch nut wrench. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get started here. All right, go ahead and open up your, your door. And on your internal panel, you're gonna be using your 5 16 nut driver, and depending on the configuration of the inner door panel. You want to go ahead and find the nuts and remove them. We're going to store your screws and then simply pull out the inner door panel. Okay, the next thing you want to do is, before you touch anything else in here, go ahead and shut down the power and ensure that you have no power coming to the timer itself. All right, one last tool that you definitely will need is a digital multimeter. Just to check your voltage, once you have shut off the power by your breaker or if you have a kill switch, that completely stops the flow of the electricity coming to your actual timer mechanism. So... Here we have a light switch that is before all of our power. So what you wanna check is your number one and your number three line. So your number one and number three line that I'm referring to is your first peg. Actually, well, it's your second peg, but they're numbered. It says one, two, three, four. You're going to be checking your number one and number three. Those two are your load, your line side rather. These are your line size power coming from the circuit breaker to your timer. So your line one and line three is your line and your line two and four is your load. Basically, that's where your pool pump is connected to. So you check your line one and cross it with your line three. Check your multimeter and we have no power here. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna flip the switch. Right there, I'm gonna check again. See, we have 243 volts. I'm gonna shut the switch off. We have no power. So now it's safe to go ahead and replace this time to make it. All right, so the next thing you wanna do is go ahead and get a Phillips screwdriver and remove. Uh, you can mark the wires if you need to, if you have a more complex uh, electrical circuitry going on, on inside you have multiple things that may be con possibly connected to your timer maybe like a salt system or any other uh, low lower amperage needed uh, equipment such as maybe you have a millivolt heater that's connected to your timer so just go ahead and check and um, mark up any of your wires just so that you could put them back in the same order that you uh, have it currently right now. So all we're doing is we're loosening the terminals. Okay, now with your quarter inch driver up on the side, you should have it uh, grounded. Go ahead and loosen that up as well. And then when you're needing those pliers, you can take the wire from around the, the grounding nut, okay? Go ahead and pull all your wires out and then 
up underneath. Once you got all your wires disconnected in this particular panel, up underneath you have this um, safety pin. Go ahead and press that up. You're gonna press up with it and then pull this mechanism out. It's better done with two hands, but nevertheless, let's see if I can get it done here. There it is, up and out, okay? So this timer mechanism, this is the motor in the back that manages the time, and this is how everything is wired, okay? Notice that the motor for the timer, the wiring goes into number one and number three, that is your line side. The line, it's there because, so the timer is always being powered throughout the whole entire 24 hour day cycle. So we're gonna go ahead and open up our new one, unbox it and start the reinstallation process. All right, so inside the box, you have a, uh, we have other stickers um, that you can put inside of your your panel if uh, there's Spanish and there's French and there's also English so if inside of your main door if you don't have a legible uh, instructions you can go ahead and you can add a new one or just put a sticker on top there's always an English Spanish and French version also too it comes with the instruction manual so you can read that as well on how to uninstall and reinstall and how to set your different uh, pins for a 120 or 230 volt circuit. They're all the same. Also inside you have a new set of pins. We'll be using those. You have your electrical uh, wiring screen that covers the electrical wires. And then your actual timer itself, okay? So with the timer itself, it slides up and in and I want to show you this um, the mounting hardware the internal mounting hardware okay I want you to take notice of these triangular stubs on either side then you have this this ledge right here on either side and then you have your locking mechanism which is up here your timer mechanism has these uh, points around these notches so it comes up into here okay and then that top notch sits right on that ledge and then you just push it back and then it locks in place okay now we're gonna go ahead and unscrew our terminals so that we can slide our electrical wires underneath okay Make sure that you tighten them down with electricity. Your terminals or your contact points where the electricity is 
should be very, uh, should be pretty tight to permit a good contact and not a loss of energy. So we'll go ahead and we'll connect our grounding wire. We'll just wrap it around the existing one and tie it down. Okay, so we got our wiring all done. Um, our ground cable tightened down. So I, I will be reusing the old cover, the electrical cover, uh, because it's a, a shorter version um, and it fits this one just fine. And it's not gonna come in, uh, come in contact or cut, uh, hit this uh, electrical switch. Um, so uh, I'll save this for another job that potentially needs it. So go ahead and uh, put the same one back if it fits your application better than what came inside of the new box. Tying down the electrical wire screen cover. And then when I find these older timers that have this rubber grommet that covers the the switch I like to take them out and reuse them people like it um, I'll flip it around so it looks new but people like touchy rubber instead of actual metal but uh, you know it's just one of the little things that I do uh, now we're going to be installing our timer pins okay and it comes with an on and off switch and then the actual screws that tighten everything down. So everything's gonna come separate. Your on switch is gonna be green, okay? Just take one of your screws, put it inside of the hole, and just get it in there where it holds itself. And you, this is where you set your actual time that you want. Okay, let's see if I can set you up here. Um, we're going to be setting this pool up to be running from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So here is our a.m. side, okay, and the dial rotates this way. So all you simply do is you slide it behind and then you torque it down, the screw down onto the yellow dial. Like that and then you do the same thing on your offset you're gonna go ahead and put it here uh, this is the time that you this is the arrow of where you set the actual time of the clock so if that arrow like our arrow is pretty close to the five o'clock mark so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna move uh, to move it around you just pull the dial back and then it's freely rotatable so we're just gonna move that around so that I'm able to put my pin where I want this pump to shut off at Okay, just make sure that your pins are tight. So we have them set from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna test everything out. Have your switch off, turn your power source back on. And there we go. All right, so last thing we have to do is put the panel back together. I'll show you how that is done. With your panel you have your two grooves on the outside that matches on the inside if you have a light switch you may have to move it up and down for the panel to go on flush so go ahead and get your your nut screws with your 516 nut driver and tighten it down One recommendation I can give you is, see on this door, this door used to have a weather stripping that went along the edge. You can go to Home Depot inside the doors and uh, windows seal section, they have uh, rows of, of uh, weather stripping. I would highly recommend to go ahead and put a layer of weather stripping here 
and you can put it down and you can put it across. It's gonna make it a much tighter fit when you do close it down and you lock it in place, but it also is gonna protect any water from seeping in through and potentially wetting your, your electrical components inside and your wiring. So go ahead and if you don't have this strip or your strip is weathered away or peeling off, go ahead and pull a new strip around and that definitely would uh, make your electrical box more secure from water or any little bugs or critters that may be able to seep in between the little cracks. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully you learned a little bit, a little bit detailed of a video. Post your comments down below. Again, to the next one, appreciate it very much. Have a great day, everyone.